All right, so Fran, we're talking about electric motor design today and soft magnetic composites and how that applies. You know, over the years, if you think back on motor design, things haven't changed that dramatically. I mean, we had induction motors, we have permanent magnet motors. Uh, there's many different ways to skin a cat when it comes to trying to convert electrical energy into mechanical. But when you think about the major changes, we haven't seen a tremendous amount, but we're talking about some soft magnetic composites, which have been around for a while, but seem to be not growing at the rate that everybody thought they might, fitting into certain applications, but being considered in others, but not, not taking off. Can you give us any insight as to why that might be? It, that's a really great question, and, and it's not, it, it, as you say, soft magnetic composites have been around for, for quite a while. And there seems to have been a cer certain reluctance to get involved. Part of it is, is what you suggested, is that it's easy for someone building a vehicle or building some kind of device to say, hey, I want a motor to do X amount of work. Well, I know that if I go to the books and, and, and go to the various motor manufacturers, they will have a, an induction motor that will fit that particular requirement. And, and that's been well established. And there's no, you can't, it's hard to argue with, certainly. But I think the world is changing. And, and, and at least in my, our humble opinion, we think the world is changing in that people are going to be looking for more. Induction motors are going to be restricted and limited to, to what I think the performance can give you in an overall criteria. And if you look at some of the motor designs even now, you know, when they look at motor design, incorporated in what they do in the motors is, is always considering how much cooling they have to do in the motor. And so that's a consideration. And, you know, behind us, you know, we, we have a couple of slides projected. And to the left, you see that, you know, we, we do a comparison of the BH curve performance of an SMC versus what we project the lamination to be. You know, and at first glance, if I'm a motor designer, I would look at that and say, eh, SMCs, they're not going to be any good because of we see this reduced performance. But that's only half of the equation, I think. The other half of the equation is what we see now on the right side. Is, is what we see in terms of the loss characteristics. You know, if you're running at 60 hertz, as we said earlier, we've talked about this for a while, we don't think SMCs are necessarily going to be a good alternative. Motor designs have been out there. You know, an induction motor, three-phase style, it's there, it's going to work. But I think people want more. You know, and, and inherently, an induction motor will always have a certain amount of slippage, which means loss of energy. And also, if you look at the, the losses, and what, what is actually loss? Loss is a loss of performance in the form of now heat. We see that, you know, with SMC products, the current batch of SMC, although they may have a reduced, what we think, magnetic performance based on their BH curve or magnetic curve opportunity, but we see that as you get above certain frequencies, that becomes an insignificant consideration relative to what we think the losses are. You know, and losses, as you say, I mean, you know, we're trying to push cars to go further, push motors to do more, push for higher performance. So I think losses now become a dominant issue. And people are going to higher frequencies just because they see an inherent gains in performance going that way. And so now, Part of the equation is, you know, we also have to consider losses as part of, as a key part in the design criteria. And, and I think now we need to address the BH side of it or the initial magnetization side of it so we'll see what we can do as a further step.